today. I'm so, so, so excited to be with this beautiful black lady. So first and foremost, I will allow these ladies to introduce themselves, but before I do, um, this is on behalf of Girls Who Listen and Troy, of course. And um, for, the, for you guys who don't know, Girls Who Listen is a nonprofit organization that's focused on really providing and creating opportunities for women in music. So we put together mentorship programs, you know, panels like these, where we, you know, just ask women to just share their experiences because, you know, everyone wants to be a boss and everyone wants to be an executive. So who's better than these ladies on these panelists to kind of give you guys, you know, that that pizzazz and that motivation to get there. So just to kick it off, I'm gonna start with Zanova. If you wanna introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, um, you know, what industry you're in, and just give us a little bit of background. Okay. So happy Friday, everyone. Um, I am from the Bronx, Bronx, New York. <laughs> um, I live in California. The field that I'm in is music marketing and music business. I am the general manager for 400 Records, and then I also own ZLK & Co., which is my own company, and we specialize in marketing um, and everything aside from marketing, but we specialize in that. Um, I'm Courtney Couch, I'm the owner of C-Lux Creative, where I work with athletes, entertainers, and lifestyle brands. Um, and I'm also the marketing director at Atlantic Records, where I have a roster of about 12 artists, Don Tolliver, um, up and coming artist Simba, and a whole bunch of other people. So, excited to be here with y'all today and drop a few gems and engage with you guys and help our our kids. Um, I'm a choreographer, creative director, artist, songwriter, many things. Um, I'm ready to be here. I'm gonna keep it quick because, like I said, I'm keep it. Excited to have you. Thank you for coming. Hi, everyone. I'm Robin J. So, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. So by day, I'm a creative talent strategist for Netflix, and also by day, I run the Indie Creator Fund, uh, a nonprofit that is on a mission to raise and invest a million dollars in Black creatives by the end of 2023. Amazing! I'm so 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 excited to have you ladies here, and um, as I mentioned in the beginning, obviously this is about you know Black Music Month, and we're really celebrating and giving a toast to Black women. So I want to start off. Especially, um, I'm gonna start with you, Charm. Actually, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to talk about, um, you know, what it's like to work with Black women, and you know, any adversities you face, or even any positive interactions that you face, if you can share a little bit about that. Well, I can give a story. Um, I'm a protege of Fatima Robinson, who is a phenomenal choreographer, director, creative director. Um, she found me when I was ten years old, and I was choreographing at ten. I didn't know I was choreographing. I she put the steps together. Um, and she's paved the way for me beyond. Um, at 17, I went on tour with Madonna, and then when I came home, I went to UCLA, she went to UCLA, and the team was like, you need to go to school. She allowed me to go to school full time and still assist her, and she literally taught me everything I know. She's my mom, she's my big sister. She's literally like my, my, my right hand, she, she's my left hand, I'm her right hand, and um, that's my like, my journey into what this is as an artist. And you can listen to what people are telling you it's going to be like, and then you know what you need, and you have your own friends, and you have your non-negotiables, you know? And then sometimes when you get in places, you learn a few things, and you outgrow it, you know? But I think being true to yourself, and knowing that um, you're a light, and you don't have to dim your light anywhere you go. And I think that's the key. I don't want to go anywhere where I need to tuck my tail, or, you know, power down or like not shine as bright as I would when I wake up in the morning, you know? So you know what that feels like when you're somewhere. And if it doesn't feel right to you, then you know, I think you have to explore other options. And I saw this quote um, recently, it says, you gotta risk it all to be yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel in my heart. I will tell you immediately leave the job and I will walk away. I don't feel bad. I think of a company as a job. Even in this big title that I'm in, or as an intern, I was like, this is not for me, I would leave. My mental health and my spirit is so important to me, and it's something I've always, I've always known that. So I am still the friend that's going to tell you to quit, because the job is, is just a job. I think the moment you have to, you aren't really able to live in, live in like the duality of you, is why you know to quit. When you know that the work you do every day does not align with what you're doing from five to nine, or that nine to five and the five to nine is just too different, so much. 
much that your soul hurts when you go back at nine, you're not in the right place. And I think I felt that um, quite a bit. Um, now, don't quit without something. <laughs> I'm new to LA, but it is expensive here, okay? Um, so just make sure you're talking to as many people as possible, tapping into, if it's not folks in other departments at the at the company you work for, tap into your network, check in, let people know you're struggling, let people know you need help, and let people help you at the same time. I think that's important. Can I get a round of applause for all of you?